Well, a very good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us for our Sunday morning service. It's a great joy to be in fellowship with you wherever you are uh, this morning. It's going to be hard to get back to uh, church together, God willing, in September when phase one of our return to church uh, uh, begins to to take place. Uh, We're all too used to uh, being in our gym jams and, and slippers of big mugs of coffee and, and croissants watching the service whenever we want. Uh, but we're really glad of a, a time of fellowship together in, in, in the spirit of God and around the word of God. And we are mindful of one another as we worship together in this way. And our services will continue to be recorded for a good time yet. So please continue to join with us via uh, Facebook and, and YouTube uh, and, and uh, email, etc. And telephone service, if that's what you use. Uh, my thanks to Helen for her editing and for Lisa a leading worship, and for Emma, who is bringing God's word to us this morning. And we begin our service as we join together now in an opening prayer. Let us pray. Let us pray. Faithful one, whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer, and shape our lives. For the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I hand over to Lisa now who will lead us in our first uh, time of praise together. Jesus says, 
Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from sin and turn to the Lord, confessing our sins in penitence and faith, saying together, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. And hear these words of absolution and the assurance of forgiveness for all who truly turn on to him. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So we now come to the psalm for this morning's service. Uh, psalm 104, and we have two sections of the psalm. Uh, verses 1 to 9 and then verse 31 to the end of the psalm. So that's Psalm 104, 1 to 9 and 31 to 35. Let's read God's word together. O Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendour and majesty. He wraps himself in light as with a garment. He stretches out the heavens like a tent and lays the beams of his upper chambers on their waters. He makes the clouds his chariot and rides on the wings of the wind. He makes the winds his messengers, flames of fire his servants. He set the earth on its foundations it can never be moved. You covered it with the deep as with a garment. The water stood above the mountains. But at your rebuke, the waters fled. At the sound of your thunder, they took to flight. They flowed over the mountains. They went down into the valleys to the place you assigned for them. You set a boundary they cannot cross. Never again will they cover the earth. And now verse 31. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He who looks at the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke, I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord. But may sinners vanish from the earth and the wicked be no more. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, as now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Hello everybody. This is a slightly different angle because in a wee minute I'm going to turn the camera. I want you to see what I'm going to do here in front of me. Um, and this is for all of the kids, but it's for the big kids and the little kids as well. And boys and girls, you might have seen somebody do this in school. And it comes with a, a tube of toothpaste. I have my tube of toothpaste and a plate. And I'm going to show you down here. So with this tube of toothpaste, now I don't know whether you're somebody who squeezes from the bottom or squeezes from the middle. People who squeeze from the, uh, from the middle drive me nuts. You have to do it from the, the top. But one thing you notice whenever you have your toothpaste is that once it's out... It's kind of out, isn't it? Look at this. If I squid all of this out, when I get to the end, and it's lovely and minty fresh, you can, you can, I can, well, I can smell it. And once I squeeze this all out, there's absolutely no chance that I am going to get this all back inside my tube of toothpaste. Once it's out, it's out. 
And it reminds me of a wee verse in Matthew uh, chapter 15. It's one of my favourite verses in the Bible. And I have a, a lovely painting that sits on my bookcase in my study. And you might actually see it the next time. It's a beautiful picture of a heart. And that verse in Matthew says this. It says that the things that come out of our mouths, they have their start in our hearts. So all the things that come out of us, the things that we do, the things that we say, once they're out, they're out. The good things, the bad things, and all the things in between, the things that we say, the things that we do, whether we're big or little. That verse in Matthew tells us that it all comes from our hearts heart that's where it has this the, the the start so when the things that when our heart is full of good things now god wants to fill us with his good things he wants to fill us with his love his goodness his strength all the things that we've been given that show us that god loves us he fills our hearts with us he wants to fill our hearts with that so when our hearts are full of all of those really good things when we keep those in our heart when we know that god loves us and he fills us up all the things then that come out of us should be good too when we know that god loves us we shouldn't want the people around us to know that god loves them too. So that should impact on the things that we do, the things that we say and everything in between because when God loves us and we know that, we want other people to know that too. And we try, we try and we all fail sometimes whether we're big or little but that's why Christ says, um, and why the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God promises his son to help us do the good things of him. So we remember that once the tooth, like the toothpaste, once it's out, it's out. The good things, the bad things, the things that we say, the things that we do. We want to uh, fill our hearts with the good things of God. He promises to fill us with those good things. And everything that we do and say comes from our heart. The good things, the bad things. And we want those around us to only hear good things because God longs for people to experience the good things of him. So the next time you're squidging out toothpaste, whether it's from the bottom or the middle, I hope it's from the bottom, um, remember that once it's out, it's out. We want good things to come out of our hearts, good things to come out of our mouths, because the good things of God fill us from within. Let's say a wee prayer together. Father, we thank you that you long to fill us with the good things of you, that you long to fill us with your love and your peace and your strength and your presence, that you sent your son to die on a cross for us and be raised to life again so that we would be close to you and know those good things of you. Lord, we want the people to be people who only allow the good things to flow out from us. Good things from a heart filled with the good things of you. So Lord, may everything that, come out, that comes from within us, the things that we do and the things that we say, our words and actions today, be only of those good things of you. And Lord, help us in the times that we find that really difficult, Lord. And forgive us for the times that we fall down and we fail. But Lord, we thank you that you go with us this day. Be upon us and within us with our families today and every day. Amen. Amen. So we come now to the point in our service where we declare our faith before our Father and one another. We're using a great prayer book creed, an ancient creed of the church, the Nicene Creed. So please do join with me in these great words. We believe. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our reading this morning is from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, uh, chapter 2, beginning at verse 11, 1 in Christ. So then, remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physical cir circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Jesus Christ, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in the place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death the hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him both of us have access to the one spirit in the Father, so then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, with Jesus Christ himself as the cornerstone. In him the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also built together spiritually, into a dwelling place for God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray um, as we open God's word this morning. Father, we pray we we'll come and just inspire our hearts to hear from your word. And would you build us up as your spiritual house, a temple for the Lord. Even though we are apart, Lord, we pray you would build us up together and continue to do so to be upon us in these coming moments as we hear from your word. Amen. Amen. Um, Mark and I have had the pleasure of hearing from so many of you over the past few months and we've been so pleased to hear that um, so many of you, you are enjoying and engaging with our online services and so on and all our different things that we've been trying to run over the past couple of months. But we, we know and, and we feel this within ourselves that so many of us miss the fellowship of church and we've heard those words from people. We miss the time spent together worshipping um, in our, our church buildings as the people of God together and we are built for fellowship aren't we we're built to be in relationship not just um, as human beings but as the people of God we're built to be in relationship with each other and that has looked different and it has looked different for for all of us in our own different situations and as we look to um, returning to in church worship in September. Church will look different and um, practically in a practical sense church will look different as as so many aspects of our normal life uh, and society looks different in a practical sense. Things may change around us but there are things that remain the same. Jesus Christ remains the same. God the Father 
God the Father, Son and Holy Spirit remains the same and he is good and he is good all the time. Our psalm this morning, as, as Mark read for us, talks about an incredible creator God who is the same yesterday, today and forever. The same God that created the earth, that laid it on its foundations is the one that holds us firm, is the one that continues to go with us and, and build us up spiritually, individually um, and together. Our, our reading from Ephesians 2 looks at the at the Gentiles and those from the uh, a Jewish uh, faith background and how, as they are built together as the early church. But there are little nuggets in there really that, uh, that I just love. Um, that idea that Jesus Christ himself is the cornerstone, that we are being built up into a temple of the Lord, a, a holy um, build, a holy, holy spiritual house for the Lord. We've been built up upon the teaching of the word of God, the apostles, the prophets, and Jesus Christ himself is the cornerstone. And I've spoken to you before um, in a previous sermon about the cornerstone, Jesus Christ being the cornerstone, the cornerstone being the first uh, stone that's laid in a building. It's used to plot um, all the other corners of that building um, and all the other corners are built upon that and the whole building rests upon that cornerstone. Without it, the building would be misaligned. Without it, and um, the building wouldn't hold together properly built. Um, it wouldn't hold together as it was designed to be as it was created to be and that remains the same Jesus Christ is foundational he is the cornerstone on which everything is built so despite the changing times there are things that remain the same Jesus Christ remains the same we remain his people we remain his church and we remain called to be in fellowship and unity with one another we remain his people we who, um, as Ephesians is, talks about, we who were Gentiles, not Jewish by birth, or were counted, um, are now counted within the covenant of Christ. We're counted within the people of God. We're counted as people of hope and peace when we turn to God in Christ. And we remain the people of God who were once far off, but have now been bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ in his death, life and resurrection has made and is making all things new. That includes us. We're made a new creation in him and we remain that new creation and being recreated all of the time. We're no longer slaves to sin, but we're beloved of Christ. We remain as his people who have been blessed with peace, people who have access to the Father, through the Son and by the Spirit. No matter how things change around us, we are still the children of God. We are still his people. We are still called um, by his name. And we remain his church. Um, that, that, that part of Ephesians says that we are no longer strangers or aliens, but we are citizens with the saints and all the members of the household of God built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Jesus Christ himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord in whom you're also built together spiritually as a dwelling place. For God. We are no longer strangers or aliens or f foreigners in, in the land, so to speak, um, but we're members of the body of Christ. We're counted among the fellowship of God and counted among the saints, counted amongst the ransomed and redeemed if we've truly turned on to Christ. That remains the same. And we are the church which is built upon the foundations of the apostles and the prophets with Jesus Christ himself as the cornerstone, meaning that we are built upon the spiritual heritage that was laid down by the early apostles and the, the prophets and the early church and we're secure upon that rock that is Jesus. And we are those who are built into the church of God, into the temple of the Lord, built into the house of the Lord. 
As First Peter says, we are chosen and precious in God's sight and we're like living stones being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Christ. Our church buildings are so often referred refer to or generally church buildings are referred to as the house of God um, but we know of course that God's household is not a building so to speak but it's a group of people it's the group of his people he lives in us and shows himself to a watching world through us our togetherness in the spiritual and physical sense is what makes us the church and as the church we're built for unity we're built for togetherness in christ and we are called to encourage and support um, and care for one another in all sorts of ways. We remain his people, we remain his church, we remain then called to fellowship with one another. Hebrews 10, and we know this verse, um, it says, we do not neglect to meet together um, and we have done our best over the past months to continue meeting together uh, on a Sunday. Um, whether you watch it online or you listen to it on the telephone, we try to meet together in a spiritual sense, worshipping the Lord. Um, we've been, we're thankful for that opportunity to continue to do so. Hebrews 10 also tells us to encourage one another. Galatians 6 tells us to bear each other's burdens. This is what fellowship means. And later on in Ephesians 4, Paul writes, With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Maintaining our fellowship and unity obviously looks different in an age of social distancing when we can't do the normal things that we do to support each other and to fellowship with one another. But we can still uphold each other in prayer. We can still speak to one another. We have all forms of technology and we still have the postal service, that's still going. Um, but we can speak and share with one another. We can still fellowship with one another in so many ways as we look forward to that time where we can meet together physically um, as the people, as the church of God. We are still his church. We are still his people. We are still called to fellowship with each other, encourage, support, pray for, care, bear up. And so many of you have been so good at this over these last months and it's a joy uh, to know that you have continued to be in fellowship with one another in whatever way um, you have, um, whatever way is being available to you. And that's encouraging uh, as leaders and that's encouraging as the church to know that we are still and bearing each other's burdens and still caring for one another in such a time as this. So what am I really saying to you this morning? I'm telling you that God the Father is the same yesterday, today and forever. He's the same as he was before COVID. He's the same now. He's the same in the future. He's always the one that cares for us. That's James 1, and I love this verse. It says, you know, every generous act of giving, every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, from the Father of creation, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. The one who is changeless, the one who cannot be changed or um, it can be affected by the things that go on in the world. Lord, he is constantly faithful. He does not change and he is always good. And he has blessed us with his son, the one on whom we are built, uh, the one that holds us firm. And we have that assurance every day. And we have that assurance in him who died and rose again for us that we remain his people. We remain his church. We remain called to fellowship with one another in whatever way we can. So whilst so much is changing around us, we remember that our Father does not change. He is the one 
the one who remains faithful, consistent in his goodness and in his loving character. And we remember that we remain his children, his people, his church, built for fellowship and unity in the body of Christ, not only in this place, but around his created world. We are people who remain firm on the foundation of Jesus Christ, the cornerstone. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you that we have that time to look forward together where we can um, meet together um, and be um, in the same place, Lord, however socially distanced, and worshipping your name together. But Lord, we thank you that we can worship you wherever we are um, and whoever we're with. Um, Lord, we pray you would continue to build us up um, in unity and fellowship as your church, as your people here in Balamina, Lord. And we pray you would continue to be upon us and within us, inspire our hearts. But Lord, give us that assurance that you go with us, that you remain faithful, that you do not change, um, that you constantly care for us, that you are a good God uh, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever, Lord. And we pray these things by your Son's precious, precious name and in your spirit. Amen. Amen. So we come now to uh, our time of prayer. Uh, we have uh, the collect for this particular Sunday in our church calendar, then our general intercessions and the Lord's Prayer. So I'd invite you now to bow your heads with me to pray. Firstly, the collect for the 11th Sunday after Trinity. O God, you declare your almighty power, most chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Mercifully grant to us such a measure of your grace that we, running the way of your commandments, may receive your gracious promises and be made partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In our general intercessions, uh, there is a response when you hear the phrase, Christ, Son of the living God, Please respond, hear us and help us. So, Christ, Son of the living God, hear us and help us. Let us once more pray together. Loving Lord God, transform us by your love. May we know and do your will. May we truly live and work for your praise and glory. Through Christ, the King of glory, who reigns and lives with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Lord, we offer our, ourselves, our hearts, our souls and our bodies to you. You give us life, you give us love, you give us yourself. May we give our lives, our love and ourselves to you. We pray for the unity of your church. We pray that we may work together for the good of all. We give thanks for the good gifts you have given to us. Let us use them for your glory. We pray especially for all who exercise gifts of ministry, prayer, teaching and healing. Christ, Son of the living God, hear us and help us. We pray for our church family that their talents and abilities may be able to be used, blessed each in their vocation and work. We remember those who in these past months have been on furlough, those who have been made redundant and for those who are unemployed. We pray that you would comfort and guide them. Be with them as they return to work or continue to look for work. Christ, Son of the living God, hear us and help us. Bless our homes with your presence and your grace. Bless our homes and families with cheerfulness and kindliness, with generosity and with goodness. We pray for our loved ones, our neighbours and our friends. 
the communities to which we belong, and the places where we work. Christ, Son of the living God, hear us and help us. We pray for all who suffer through the cruelty of others, for all who have lost confidence in themselves or in others. We pray for those who are finding dif different relationships difficult, for those who are lonely, those who feel rejected or distressed. We pray for all those who are in trouble, need, sickness or any other adversity. Christ, Son of the living God, hear us and help us. In a moment of stillness, we take an opportunity to offer our own prayers to God our Father. Christ, Son of the living God, hear us and help us. As we continue to pray, wherever we are, we use the word that our Lord Jesus himself taught us, our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. We now hand over to Lisa uh, to conduct us in our final act of worship for this morning's service.
words of prayer and blessing as we bring our time of worship together to a close. May the Lord bless you and take care of you. May the Lord be kind and gracious to you. May the Lord look on you with favour and give you peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.